Hi, good, good afternoon. Yeah, Tom Dawes, I'm so cold over there. So if you see me shivering, it's not because of nerves, it's because I'm very cold. Okay, so first of all, Tom Dawes, uh, and I've got a confession to make. Um, I am actually a recovering manufacturer. I need to explain a bit of my history to tell you where I want to take the business. So it also, I want to talk you through some PhD research in supply chain collaboration, how I formed a business as a one-man band, an aerospace manufacturing company, grew it to 200 people, and then failed miserably. And then how I learned from that, how I reflected on it, and now how we're helping digitize and connect supply chains. So very briefly, I'll give you a bit, a bit of background. So supply chains were very flat several years ago, maybe a decade, 20 years ago. The, the benefits of that was that OEMs had a good direct relationship with the tier ones. The knowledge, the relationships, the communication was there. The, the, but it's very inefficient. So companies couldn't focus on the core competencies. There's high overhead costs and limited risk share. That moved on to then supply chain rationalization. So it really was not about supply chain management, more about abdicating supply chain. So supply chains got pushed down into the food chain, um, reduced the overhead costs, uh, which is good. Focus on companies with focus on the core competencies. But this is the, that this is the area that I find interesting: is that there's a lack of knowledge. So good tier ones were becoming tier threes and tier four suppliers. A lot of that knowledge was lost. A lot of responsiveness was lost. So it's how can you combine the two? So in, I finished my research in 2002 and I thought, right, I want to set up a company. It's why I did my research. Do I go into software? Well, I can't write any software code. I still can't. Thank, thankfully, I work with people who can. Um, but, or do I go into manufacturing? So I actually set up my first company called Aero Logistics. Had some success. Uh, I had control of the bottleneck. So I bought an aerospace special processing company. I managed to constrain the supply chain, which was around electroplating and heat treatment. So I managed to con c capacity constraints in the supply chain. I set up a low cost supply chain in India and Poland. Grew, grew, grew rapidly and had some success. And I was loving, loving, living the dream for a few years. Uh, but best new business in 2007 and suddenly the wheels fell off the bus. Um, and I'd like to now talk about why, what could I have done differently? And how did I learn? So. It's almost like trying to, I've heard this phrase a few times, trying to change the fan belt in a car when it's, when it's running. And it's almost I didn't have enough time to improve the business processes to, to scale up. So I, we, we spent some money on, on Oracle ERP software, and yet we're doing everything by spreadsheets. It's amazing because spreadsheets are so flexible, so convenient, but so flipping up, you know, it's just not scalable. You just can't scale up. It's not collaborative. It's not audited. audited you can't trace things. It's hard to share. So very fragmented systems. Our risk management was all about reacting. It was all about, oh, crikey, this delivery's late. What are we going to do about it? How do you react? Rather than, how could, you, how could we, that have been prevented? And total cost of acquisition, we hear a lot about low-cost labor um, countries, but really I was adding costs because I wasn't managing the risk in the supply chain. I was, I was seeking lower-cost labor rather than really trying to re-engineer the value chain. So what, what could I have done differently? I could done lots of things differently on reflection. But strategy and execution are two key things. So strategy, I hear about onshore supply chain, so I should have kept more of a local supply chain to maintain responsiveness and be able to react to risk and also to be able to help the knowledge transfer. So before just sending work straight to India and Poland, be able to manage the NPI process and transfer. And secondly, the data in the supply chain is only as good as the data that's in there. So if you're not getting good data from your suppliers, it's, it's, you know, it's crap in, crap out. So, you need, so the suppliers we're working with needed better ERP software, needed better data to manage their production facilities and machines. Having collaborative new products introduction, so managing key stage gates of the risk in the supply chain is really important to be able to automate that. And then not taking people, unfortunately you can't trust everybody in this world, I've learned that, uh, but if you take your suppliers from mistakes, saying that these dates are going to be delivered on this date without any transparency, then you often get let down. So often I've been promised to be parts going to be delivered on time. They're not even started, not even bought the castings, which takes 26 weeks. You know, examples like that. So having order book visibility is really important. Oh, crap, that's full of going a bit there. But it's about strategy and execution. So it's about having ERP, supply quality engineering. So those consolidate not just your ERP data, about what you're placing on your suppliers, your, your spend and your order book visibility, but also things like your supplier audits and your supplier business diagnostics. 
be able to compile all this. So we have lots of fragmented systems with ERP and spreadsheets. Be able to pull all that together and make it very easy, easy to navigate. Be able to map your suppliers and your supplier suppliers and your supplier suppliers. Now that that is that's one thing. Be able to map that, but a key part to successful supply chain management is that supply chain engagement. And a big part of that is about understanding what's in it for me. Why should I share more data with my customer if all they're going to do is beat me up more or take the work off me or use it as negotiation? So how do you identify the what, what's in it for me and the win-win? Can I ask a quick question? How many people represent small companies here? There's not, not many. Okay. I, I won't do the sub story for small companies then. I'll talk about big companies. Okay. So key part of it is about making real time, getting real time intelligence. How do you capture real time intelligence? And, it's, and that's what I'd like to talk about now. So, okay. How do you decide the supply chain? So we're, we're about not just going top down, not just a big company with an ERP system ma autocratically managing its supply chain, but how to engage the suppliers, how to engage your tier ones, your tier twos, right down to SMEs. So SMEs are more willing to share information, share operational information, commercial information, technical information. So we have an approach that we provide not just technology but also intelligence to the suppliers. So they have, they have better market intelligence, they have better forward visibility of demand, better information about competitors, and they have different access to different tools. And that's a big part for industry four as well is before you make big investment, how can you how can you try before you buy? How can you prove out some return on investment before you actually make your big investments? And the freemium productivity apps is, is one one approach. And it's about connecting the end-to-end -end supply chain, very much from the bottom up. So it's about how can you how can you motivate the suppliers to share information? How can you get them to share information with their customers, suppliers, and capture that? And then the, then it's about how can you visualise that? And that's what I'm going to show you. So part of our approach is we have productivity tools. So we have production control software that we sell to ER, sell generally to manufacturing SMEs. But we've got a system we sell directly to Airbus. For additive manufacturing, so we have a version that just manages additive manufacturing software. Uh, we, we capture data from people, plant processes, processes. So capturing data from plants, from smart data capture, something we developed with Bentley Motors, which is about capturing through, throughout the product life cycle, capture data from people. Smart workflow, so how do you standardise workflow in the business? How do you standardise those new products introduction? So capturing data from your people, plant processes. So it's about not just within the four walls. Industry four should not just be about capturing data from people, plant and process. It's also from your partners. If you've, if you've got great control of your business, but you've got lots of disruption from customer volatility or poor supply chain performance, then you're going to have inefficient levels of, of inventory just to buffer that volatility. So how can you connect with your customers and your suppliers? And then underpinning all of that is how can you do that intelligently? And how can you capture data in real time analyze that data to then predict. So that's what I'm going to show you about that journey. So we've got here through Innovate UK, so thank you very much Lynn and her team for helping us. So we've got funding from Innovate UK and from Horizon 2020 to help us scale this business up. We work on lots of blue chips but primarily SMEs and our, my passion is about helping SMEs drive productivity, drive efficiencies and collaborate because that's the only way, that's the only way whole supply chains can be competitive. So uh, one of our platforms is called IE Cluster. It's about intelligent clustering. Intelligent clustering can be how a large company can cluster with its suppliers or how a supplier can collaborate with other customers and suppliers. Capturing data from local government, industry associations, accreditation bodies. Capturing data from ERP software, CRM software, PLM software, audits. Capturing data from what's online. So capturing data from financial credit risk, environmental risk, social media. That's huge amounts of data. So how do you capture all that data and make meaningful sense out of it? So that's what we've got here. Hopefully this will work. So, so what we've got is we've got ability, but we call it, it's a bit like a Facebook or business to business. So you can make companies maintain their own profile. They can say what capabilities, capacities, profiles that they have. You can then drill in and start to see your supply chain. So you can really drill in. You can see what information you've got. So you can see here, you can see you've got seven systems integrators. See those companies are. And then start to visualize those companies and see who are they connected with? Who are their connections, connections? Start to visualise risk. And whatever, whatever information you want, there's lots of visualisation tools out there, but it's only as good as the data integrity that you can capture. So, how do companies start? So, one good having this, this view of the world where it could get to. 
what do you do differently tomorrow? And that's one of the key messages, is what can you do? Where do you start? And it, it all comes down to data. So it's about where do you get the data from originally? How can you capture good, reliable data from people, plant processes, and partners? So capture that data reliably. Next step is then seeing that. So using different tools out there, we've got a great one, by the way, but I would say that. But just be able to visualize your data. Be able to visualize your data in real time. Share that data through dashboards, through mobile interfaces, through cloud technologies, whatever it, whatever it needs to be to get the right data to the right people at the right time to make the right decisions. Now, this is one key thing I'd like people to try and take away is, is that you, you can't go straight to the AI without this next step, which is around diagnostic analytics. Is understanding why are things happening. So I've got my data, I'm visualizing my data, I understand my data. Why are things happening? So we do quite a lot on quality, you know, the root cause analysis of why did that job fail, why, what, what happened to that issue? But why did that delivery fail? What was, why did we not achieve the productivity levels we were, we were expecting? How can you capture that, that intelligence from the operator, from the, from the supply chain? Only once you do that can you really start to get into the world of predictive analytics on an operational level to really understand. So having to going from just lessons logged, which a lot of people do, to lessons learned. So not just capturing what's happened, but why has it happened, what could we have done to prevent it, and then making sure we have a closed feedback loop to make sure that people put the right place, plans in place to prevent it happening again. And this is me finishing now, really, but this is just about visualising the data. Once you've got all this data together, you can start to really analyse, pull, pull your data together. This is an example of a, um, on a, a risk dashboard that we have for companies, pulling real-time data. It's all about pulling, it, pulling it, that intelligence together so you can visualise your information in your supply chain. Okay. And that, that is me. So if there's one thing I'd like to say, I've um, I learnt more from failure than I have from success. And hopefully... I'll enjoy success more than I enjoy failure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom.